Darkroom is going through a very exciting transition. iPhone RAW files often look like this. You rarely get an even exposure across the frame and some tweaking, to put it mildly, is required to get them looking like how you envision. So as a RAW shooter, you're constantly having to do your best to try and retain as much information as you can across the exposure range and rely on the image sensor having the dynamic range to recover what you need later. But you also have to rely on your editing app having a rendering engine that is able to output the information contained in the file and this has been a big problem in Darkroom until today. Yes, I've decided to come back to YouTube for one last video because according to Berg & Co, Darkroom's rendering engine has received a massive upgrade which should bring with it significant improvements to the highlights, shadows, blacks, whites and exposure sliders. <laughs> which will work like this. When you install the update, any images that you've already started editing, no matter when they were captured, will still use the old rendering engine until you reset the edits or revert to the original. But any images that you've not edited that you then start to edit from scratch will use the new rendering engine. So let's jump in and see what's what, starting with the shadows and the blacks. This is the exact same iPhone 13 Pro Max RAW file open in the old darkroom on the left and the new darkroom on the right. Notice how the files and their histograms are subtly different even before I do anything. And now watch what happens when I move the shadows slider. Wow, there's just no comparison at all. The old version has lifted the shadows, but it's also done some other things that I didn't want that's made her look like she's been cartoonified. Whereas the new version has simply lifted the shadows and revealed the detail in the file. And it's a similar story with the blacks. Old version, new version same night and day improvement. Next example, this is an iPhone 12 Pro RAW file and shadow recovery in the old version. Wow. Shadow recovery in the new version. Wow. Two very different kinds of wow there. Oh, wow, 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 wow. And this is the kind of shadow and black results you can expect across all images, even in extreme examples when it seems like there should be no hope. But what about the highlights? Well, this landscape photo is another iPhone 13 Pro Max RAW file and its sky is right in the highlight recovery sweet spot and the new darkroom performs well. Again, much better than the previous version. But any brighter than this and the highlights slider will probably disappoint you. Let's take a look at this example. Amazing shadow recovery, as we've seen. But when it comes to bringing the sky back, the highlights slider just doesn't live up to the same standard and perform nearly as well as you might expect it to. The best way by far to recover highlights in darkroom still is to use the exposure slider. But the exposure slider doesn't just affect the highlights, it should affect the entire image, right? Yes, but once the shadows are lifted substantially, they seem to be a lot more protected than the highlights, almost as if the exposure slider starts ignoring them somewhat and operating within certain tonal values, like you've set the black point. So when you bring the exposure down, it acts more like I'd want the highlight slider to act, to a degree. Of course, at the end of the day, it is still the exposure slider and eventually the entire image will become too dark and the shadowed areas oddly faded. Sometimes the shadows and exposure slider combination are an effective workflow as you can see here and here. But sometimes you need further workarounds such as in this image. If I raise the shadows here as I did before and then bring the exposure down, it's brought the sky back, but now she's a touch too dark. So in this case, I can use Darkroom's excellent subject mask to fix it. 
So highlights and whites obviously aren't there yet in Darkroom and the developers Berg & Co are well aware of this. I spoke with Darkroom co-founder Majd Tabi for around one hour. That conversation will be up on my channel tomorrow and he acknowledged very openly that the team didn't have chance to fully address Darkroom's highlights issues and that next year they will actively be working on further massive upgrades in this area. And based on what they've done with the shadows, I believe him. And I think that inside scoops like that are definitely worth a subscription to my channel. Now let's move on to non-raw shooters. Yes, this update affects you strange bunch too. And you'll all be very pleased to know that processed formats like JPEG, Hike, TIFF and Pro Raw all receive a dramatically enhanced all-around experience because Berg & Co are clearly biased against raw shooters. I'm just kidding, I'm not upset at all. You lot enjoy your amazing highlight recovery as if your images aren't home mapped enough already. Now let's address the common question. How does it compare to Lightroom? Well, we know the highlights still need work in Darkroom, so I'm just going to compare the shadows. And well, Lightroom is a freak of nature. So to put Darkroom, which is currently being developed by five people, up against Lightroom, which is backed by a multi-billion dollar juggernaut Adobe, just wouldn't be fair, okay? Wow, look at Darkroom Go, providing a result that is comparable to the mighty Lightroom. And while Lightroom does maintain more contrast and detail in the shadows as they become midtones, and Lightroom's exposure slider behaves more like I expect an exposure slider to behave, just look at that phenomenal improvement from Darkroom. If I'd have shown you this before and after yesterday, and I told you it had been done in Darkroom, you'd have told me absolutely no chance. And look at where the highlights are, right in the Darkroom Highlight Recovery sweet spot. So, Darkroom, Lightroom. But let's explore another raw example because I find this really interesting. When I raise the shadows in this image to plus 100 in both apps, Lightroom's result is a lot brighter, it's more striking and far more abrupt, whereas Darkroom's is more subtle, it's more colourful, more natural, and I find it more artistically pleasing, as if a team of artists are behind Darkroom's algorithms, compared to Lightroom's, which feel like more of a technical demonstration of what can be done by a team of engineers, and it's actually brightened the shadows up so much that they're now highlights and they get dimmer when I bring the highlights down, which is crazy. I'm not saying one is objectively better here. I'm just presenting the results to you and then giving my opinion, which is, it really depends on what you're trying to do. And I suppose I could sum it up like this. If you want artistic, go with Darkroom. If you want absolute, then go with Lightroom. But that's just raw files. How do processed files compare? Well, it's a similar story. You see, in these pro raw files, again, Lightroom is like, ah, and Darkroom is like, ah. And apparently my analysis is now me just making noises, which <laughs> I can see why you wanted me to come back to YouTube. Anyway, am um, I switching back to Darkroom? Yes, I'm very excited about what Darkroom has become since I've been away from it and what it is becoming. Because along with this new rendering engine, which is what this video is about, Darkroom is now infinitely more stable than it has been in the past. And I'm running a beta version, which, you know, they're not the best, but I've had Darkroom open for longer than 24 hours in some cases on my MacBook Pro. And it's only crashed once, which was this morning. Whereas on my iPhone 13 Pro Max, hasn't crashed at all. This is very, very different from the darkroom of old, which would crash multiple times within a few minutes. This one, very, very stable. Love that. Also, the new sharing presets feature. That is in danger of being iPhone 8 by the iPhone 10, which is this new rendering engine. iPhone 8 presets, sharing, iPhone 10, um, <laughs> new rendering engine. Let's not forget about the sharing presets feature, which has been really, really well received. I've been venturing a lot more into the swamp that is Twitter, yuck, and just 
like enjoying seeing people sharing presets and I love that that learning and that that sharing of information that's what I'm doing here with you that's why I have this YouTube channel I love sharing what I found but that doesn't mean that I'm going to be getting rid of Lightroom completely Lightroom Mobile yes but Lightroom Classic no I still use Lightroom Classic for my full-time job which is a marketing manager for a construction company but the thing is Lightroom Classic and, and Darkroom the photo editing apps but they're like worlds apart they shouldn't even be in the same conversation and for me now going forward as a mobile photographer and darkroom is the app for me and also i'm going to be editing a full wedding in darkroom including importing the photos culling through them um, editing them exporting them and just seeing just how Darkroom performs because I do want to do a more full review of Darkroom as a whole but I thought this video about editing the full wedding would be more interesting it's something different something I've not done before and it's easier for me to make it's an easier video for me to make because I'm highly lazy I'm just kidding anyway that's enough out of me there's an ending about to happen go out and shoot something and then edit it in darkroom thanks for watching okay and it's actually brightened the highlights so much that they're now actually shadows wait